have the same values. I want them to be, uh, I'm not a micromanager. I need them to be self-starters and guys that uh, uh, that know the business and uh, know how to evaluate. Uh, it goes beyond just, uh, just getting players. They have to be very good coaches. They're very active in our practices. I, I, uh, player development is something that uh, I know we're great at. And, and I think that's something that you've got to have good coaches uh, to get on the floor and work with guys. And uh, we'll, um, we'll look for all those traits. I know Lamont's a guy that you like. Have you had conversations with him? We're continuing to, to, to work on those conversations, yeah. He's uh, been with Lamont a long time. I work side by side with him. I know exactly what I have in him. And, uh, uh, he's a uh, he's a he's a gifted coach. Coach, when having discussions with Andy Whitman about the university program and about the tradition of basketball, not just in the university but across the state, you had prior knowledge at Western. Why why is it important to sort of rekindle that history, bring back alumni, and, and sort of instilling in the young student athletes that this program does matter? To be great and and elite. I don't care. You can look, you name anyone you want. The elite programs all have their former players and their former coaches in that. And, and there has to be a place where the seniors in this program know when they're done, they can always call this home. And they can always come back here and be revered and, and know that the sweat equity they put out here for four years, three years, whatever it is, um, has value. And that means a great deal to me. And... Uh, uh, I, I felt important when I graduated from Kansas State because that was a place. And you can look right on down the list of the great programs they have. And I look forward to getting to know those those players and uh, hearing their stories and sitting down with Coach Hanson and I'll talk with uh, uh, with Juan and Bill later in the week and and, and hear their stories and, and that's that's something I. I think it's very, very important. Cool. We spent a lot of time in Macomb uh, recruiting Peoria, too. Uh, you, you know Peoria pretty well and the, the talent base in Peoria. Yeah, I hope, there's, I hope the talent there continues to be as good as it was uh, at Manual and Central back in those days. But, uh, uh, you know, it's we're going to recruit everyone. And I uh, uh, spent a lot of time in, in, in Peoria back in the day. And, and, uh, and the surrounding area of Western Illinois. Uh, Coach, implementing your system, you usually go like full in with the system, but you have got the personnel in the transition like this. I just go all in right away. No, I jump off feet. It's, uh, uh, it's a process that you, uh, uh, I don't think you can do it any other way. If you're full commitment, uh, you, know, you go and, and do the. Uh, uh, the best you can to show our committed you are to them and vice versa. What's your message to fans that are still processing uh, the job switch at your old job? At, at Oklahoma State? Yeah. It's a great place. It's an incredible place. That, the, 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 the program is bigger than um, than than any one person, and, and um, I think we left that place um, better. I think there's a there's a great young people in the program uh, that allowed us to be successful. Uh, like I said, it wasn't just me; those, play, those players got better. They they bought in, they worked, and uh, um, it's a special place. And, and uh, uh, they won before me, and and they'll continue to grow, and and they'll find a terrific coach. Analytics can be complicated, intimidating to some who may not be entrenched in numbers. How do you try to simplify it, or how have you simplified it? Your athletes and how can alumni fans try to become more knowledgeable with analytics? I don't get too in depth with our players. It's more for, for, for our staff, it's more for, for my understanding. You can take a lot of uh, uh, our game, good or bad, is, is moving towards more of the NBA game with the shorter shot clocks and so on and so forth. And, and, and metrics and analytics are just part of, of being able to decipher information. Uh, the greatest thing for me is is we can then have so much information, we can use it in our individual workouts. Uh, and a certain athlete goes better, goes to his right, uh, better than he goes to his left. Well, in the offseason, we need to work on his left hand. We need to work on the fundamental things. And, and that's what analytics 
has been able to provide us and, and create some of those uh, uh, those ways to help our athletes become more. Coach, did the uh, contract negotiations at OK State, did that play a role in your decision? Or with, if those kind of negotiations have gone well, would this you take this job anyway? No. It's been right, right where I'm standing today. Coach Juwan Evans had a lot of success in your program last year. Um, what makes your system so maybe guard friendly, allow point guards to be at their best? Well, one, he's really, really good. Right. And um, he's a gifted player. He has a lot of the things that you don't, uh, you don't coach. Instinct is off the chart. And, and uh, uh, as talented a player as he's a better kid, but he's, uh, he's, he's, he's my definition of a great player because he not only makes himself better, but he makes his teammates better. And um, yeah, when you've got a good player, you're gonna, you're gonna take advantage of his strengths, put him in scenarios that would allow him to be, uh, uh, to be successful, and then know that because of his ability to make decisions, he's gonna make others better. And uh, you look, we changed. Uh, when I was at Stephen F. Austin, we had the fewest ball screens in the country. Uh, that was based on personnel, and it didn't fit our personnel. At, at Oklahoma State, we had to change. We had to fit our personnel and, and, uh, uh, and their strengths. And uh, uh, we ran some of the same stuff. We went about it a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, Juwan's, uh, Juwan's a pro. He's a pro. So you'd be foolish not to take advantage of, of what he has to offer. It's an interesting time to get into the Big Ten considering you know, Bo retires. Tom Izzo is reaching the age where retirement becomes a factor. John Beeline the same way. You got younger coaches. I assume that you see an opportunity here with Illinois to kind of take advantage of uh, changeover. Well, I think everything's a little bit cyclical at different times. Um, I know this, this, this league has great coaches. No matter who's on the other side of them, there's going to be pretty good coaches. And um, uh, I don't get too worried about who those guys are. Um, you know, John Beeline's as good offensive basketball coach. I knew that before we played him. Um, so, I, you know, I think that, that I, this program doesn't need timing to be or, or to be considered who's, who's at what other program. We need to go about doing what we do, and we'll be fine. Because you're a long time, being a long time assistant, doing the JUCO ranks, things like that, does it give you maybe even a little more appreciation Absolutely. coming from there to get to Absolutely. this stage? Absolutely. <laughs> like a, the journey makes it, and, and I mean that in a, in a positive way. Would I have loved to become a head coach earlier? Sure. But not at the expense of not understanding and not knowing. And, and I've always been a guy who's had tremendous value and appreciation for tradition. And, and, and what programs have to offer uh, from that standpoint. That's not recreated overnight. Uh, you can sell tradition. And that's something that, that we do every day in recruiting. And come join this and be a part of this. And when you can sell that it's been done before, we sell that. And, and that means a great deal. In talking with Josh on Saturday, did he stress the importance of recruiting in-state, not just in Chicago, but across the street? No, I think Josh Josh talked about winning, and and I think whether that's uh, you know we're going to branch. We're gonna, I've been in this thirty years. We've got connections everywhere. Uh, are we going to recruit in state? Absolutely. We foolish not to. But if we've got a connection in DC or New York or uh, Miami or LA, and he's a good player and he fits what we're doing. We're going to bring him here. It's a great place to bring him. And uh, uh, you're playing in arguably the best league in the country and, and this. Are you kidding me? We, we can go get anybody we want. How does the recruiting budget here uh, compare to other places you've been? It's non, non-factor. It's tremendous. We've got, we've got every resource we need to, uh, to be fabulous and, and to do exactly what we need to do. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Thank you.